So now we are going to make the crepe souffle. So with that, we are going to start with the creme patissière or the pastry cream. So for that, we're gonna take our two eggs. We just need the egg yolks for this. So we're gonna separate out the egg yolks. So we're gonna crack our egg. We're gonna put the whites into our deli container. And I normally just do that right through my hand. They'll fall right through. So just the simple egg yolk. And again, we're gonna do it right through. Make sure everything gets out. That one's a little bit more difficult. So we're gonna change our gloves. Make sure we're staying clean. And from here, we're just gonna move to the side our egg whites. We can put those actually in our compost bin. Everything can go in there. Then we're going to take half of our sugar and mix half of this into our eggs and whisk. We're just going to mix these together, cream them together so they are incorporated. From there, we're going to mix our cornstarch, our two tables of cornstarch. And then we're going to mix our tablespoon of vanilla and then mix those together. Just be aware that the cornstarch will start to lump, so you need to make sure it's all incorporated. Again, a whisk is the best way to do this. So it gets everything in there. All right. Once it's all incorporated, you're gonna set this aside and we will move on to the milk on the stove. So now I'm gonna take my one cup of milk and my remaining half of the sugar into a small saucepan on about medium heat and take, take my spatula here. Just make sure the sugar is dissolved. What we wanna make sure that we do is watch this milk. Because it doesn't have a very fat, high fat content, it'll burn very quickly because there's a lot of sugar that's in milk. And we added more sugar to it. So we just wanna make sure that we're bringing this up just to about a boil, but we're not overcooking it. So you wanna make sure to watch this as you cook it because sometimes you'll see in the pan, it'll start to get a little bit hot and almost caramelize on the edges because of the sugar. So we're gonna let this just come up. And I'm stirring every once in a while just to make sure that the milk solids that are sitting on the bottom of that pan do not scorch. Because naturally those heavy milk solids will go to the bottom. So now that you can see that our milk is starting to slightly boil, it'll get really more rapid. So at this point, we wanna take it off the heat. We're gonna go back over to our station and we're gonna temper this into some of our egg mixture. Okay, so we're gonna go back over to our station, put this down, I'm gonna take a ladle. So I have my egg mixture here that had the cornstarch, it has the vanilla, it has sugar and egg yolks. And we're just gonna just really easily start taking some of that milk, just lightly tempering it in here. So we're making this temperature from a cold egg, we're getting it warm with the hot milk mixture. So that way when we put it all together, it doesn't scramble. Because obviously eggs, when they get hot, they like to cook very quickly. So we're just tempering this to get it used to the hot liquid. So we want just enough to where this gets warm before we add this all together and put it back on. Okay, so just enough to where it's not ice cold anymore. So we're gonna take this and go right back to the stove with all of this in tow, right back over here. So now you're gonna wanna turn this down to about a low, a little bit higher than low, 
to get this milk warm again, making sure you're scraping all the sides, any of the milk solids that are starting to stick. Scrape that all. And then once you see steam again, we're gonna use our whisk and we're gonna slowly, opposite now, temper this into here. We wanna vigorously whisk at this point because this is gonna wanna cook pretty quick and it's gonna thicken. We have cornstarch to help that process, but also the egg yolks, because there's protein in it, is gonna naturally start to thicken once it gets hot. So we're gonna mix all of that in there, making sure everything from our bowl is in there. And we're gonna keep mixing. And at this point, I'm actually gonna switch over to my spatula again, you see it's starting to boil. So you wanna take this off right when you see that first little bubble. You don't want it to boil to where it gets scrambled. You just want it to thicken. So just that initial first couple bubbles that we saw is just enough to kind of get it all going. So we're, again, we're tempering it. We're always scraping the bottom and the sides. We don't want it to get too hot. We're gonna put it back on just for a minute to make sure all of this is nice and cooked constantly scraping, constantly moving it. We don't wanna stop moving it because it will start to curdle. So again, it's getting thicker as you can see. And that, my friends, is a cream patissier. So what we're gonna do from here, is we're gonna turn off our burner, we're gonna walk back over to our station. And you have your bowl that's sitting on ice. We're gonna take that we're gonna take this beautiful pastry cream. As you can see, it's not chunky. It doesn't look like scrambled eggs. It's nice and thick, it smells wonderful. We're gonna put that into our pan. We're gonna make sure just to give it a little extra fun right there. We're gonna take plastic wrap because this will create a skin if we don't do that and we don't want it to happen. So you're gonna take that, put it right on top, make sure it's covered right directly on our ice to chill. And that is it. That is our cream pâtissier. Now that we just finished our cream pâtissier, we are actually going to take some of our strawberries that we are going to incorporate in the garnish, but also into the dish. So we're gonna brunoise these and add these to our cream pâtissier as it's cooling down. That way it incorporates a little more of that strawberry flavor that we want in our crepe. So we're gonna take these, just cut the tops off. Again, like other recipes, we wanna make sure we're just doing a, a quick small dice on these, or we can do a brunoise. This doesn't have to be exactly as uh, perfect as the other recipes call for, but you just wanna make sure they're at least somewhat uniform into this and small. That way it incorporates the flavor evenly and it still matters to make sure our knife cuts are consistent. So even if we're not measuring each specific little one, they need to be consistent in size. So we're gonna do two of strawberries. That way the pastry cream has great flavor in addition to what it already has. We're still gonna garnish with pastries or with the strawberries, but we wanna add it to the cream when it's still warm. So we're gonna take the pastry cream that we have. We're just gonna lift up the film a bit. We're gonna go in and add these strawberries to it. And then we're just gonna give it a little quick stir. That way the heat of the pastry cream is gonna to start to bring out that strawberry flavor. And then we're going to cover it up again to not create that skin. And we're gonna let that rest. Now we're moving on to make our crepe batter. So we're gonna take our one third cup plus one teaspoon of flour to our half a cup of milk. We're gonna crack one egg into this. Put that in our compost bin. We're gonna do our sugar, one tablespoon. We have our fourth of a uh, teaspoon of vanilla. And then we have our melted butter. 
mix all that together. We always want to make sure we're adding our liquid to the flour. Mix this together. Make sure we're really incorporating everything. Get, get all the lumps out. Scrape the sides with our whisk as we go. Really just mix until we get all the lumps out. We don't want any lumps in our crepes. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna let this crepe batter sit. Once we mix everything and incorporate it all, we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes or so. We wanna make sure that the, all the flour absorbs all the liquid. That way, when we make our crepes, they're the right texture. All right, so we're gonna get all our lumps out. Make sure the egg is fully incorporated. All right, and we're gonna set this aside just for a little bit, and then we're gonna move on to our chocolate sauce. So from here, switch my gloves really quick. We are going to take our small saucepan. We're gonna put that on low heat, just to warm the pan slightly before we add our water and our two ounces of dark chocolate. So this, we're gonna add our two tablespoons of water. It is going to do exactly what we want it to do, which is bubble up like that. We wanna make sure it's hot. We're gonna take our chocolate and start breaking it into pieces into here. And slowly let it start melting. We're add just a bit more of our water. Okay, we're gonna take our spatula and make sure that we stir this so it doesn't stick. Always make sure we have a little extra water just in case if we need to thin this out at all. But this is looking good. We just want it to melt. We want to make sure we're not overcooking this or over reducing so much water out of it. We want it to be nice and shiny, nice and smooth, not too thick. And we want to keep this at a pretty low temperature. We don't want this necessary to necessarily to boil over just enough to melt the chocolate. So it should have a nice sheen to it. You'll start seeing those Chocolate solids melting, always constantly scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. We don't want anything to burn. And it's becoming very, very, very thick. We want to start taking it off. We don't want it to get too thick, because remember it's going to cool slightly and get thicker. So this is a nice consistency. You don't want it too thick. You want it just enough to where if you move your spatula, it'll kind of create a little river and come together. So you know that's the right thickness. And we're gonna put this aside. So now we're gonna make our crepe. So we wanna make sure the pan is warm, but not hot. All right, so we have our clarified butter in there in a warm pan. And we're gonna go ahead and add about an ounce and a half to this. We're gonna make sure this is nice and spread out around. Make sure it's nice and spread out as it starts to cook. So just really thin layer. We're gonna keep it on the heat as it starts to cook and just keep moving it. What you wanna make sure, again, that the pan is not too hot. It's just enough or just the surface area of the bottom of the pan. So the pan is on low heat right now. We're gonna increase it slightly once it sets. So again, you can kind of see a little bit of it cooking on the edges, but we want those little lacy edges. So a little bit thinner, batter on the side. It's gonna start to cook. Really don't wanna do too much to it. Just let it cook. So it takes just a couple minutes for it to be fully ready to flip. But again, you'll be able to see that and the indication will be the color on the edges. Once that starts to get a little bit more caramelized in color, a little 
a little darker, we'll know that it's time to flip it. So we're getting close. Again, every once in a while, just give it a little stir. And it's also much easier if you have a coated pan so it's not gonna stick. As you can see, it's starting to just turn colors on the side. That's a good indication that we're close. If you wanna give it a little, little peek, you can. We look good. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove it from, from the pan. We're gonna give it a quick flip. We're just gonna put it slightly back down just for a minute, just to set, but it's just a minute. We want the color just to be on that one side. So we're gonna take it and move it onto a pan. We're gonna do this again three more times so we have four crepes total. There's only three crepes used in the recipe, but it's always good to have an extra. That way you can pick your best three ones. Okay, now we are going to plate our crepes. But there's one last thing we have to cut before we do it is our strawberries for our garnish. So we're gonna just slice them, but we're not gonna slice them how we did before. We're gonna just do the shape of the round part of the strawberry. We're gonna keep that intact. We, we don't need to have huge pieces, just a, something very simple. We'll do one more. All the way down we're going to get rid of the ends all right so then we are going to go ahead and start plating we have our pastry cream that's cold we're going to remove the plastic wrap from that and discard it we are going to take the pastry cream out of our ice bath we're going to put it simply here and just give it a stir it is still nice and creamy there's no scrambled eggs in there. The strawberries have had time to incorporate some of their beautiful flavor. So we're gonna plate, plate this just very simply. So what we're looking for is to making sure all of these different components, the crepes, the cream patissier, the chocolate sauce, were all made correctly. So we wanna make sure that we keep the integrity of those. What we aren't looking for necessarily is a plate that's just full of garnish with just a lot of stuff going on. We wanna to keep to the tradition of what the dish is. So we have our three crepes that we decided to use of the four. We wanna make sure there's two sides to these. This is the side that we are gonna, is our presentation side. This is the side we are going to fill. As you can see, there's two totally different sides. So we're gonna take our pastry cream. Again, this is more pastry cream than what we need, but we're making it to learn how to make cream patissier. So we're gonna take the pastry cream. We're gonna put a good amount of dollop in the middle of each of these, making sure we get some of the strawberries. Again, you see how the cream patissier is not scrambled. It's nice and velvety smooth. So we're gonna take our spoon and we're gonna just simply spread it in the middle We wanna have a good amount of the pastry cream in these crepes. We're gonna add just a touch more as I spread it, just a touch more, okay? We're gonna take these and fold them. So when we fold them, we're gonna just slightly move the pastry cream around. We're gonna fold them into another triangle here and just again, slightly push the pastry cream, not that it's oozing out the edges, but just right to the edge. We're gonna take our little offset spatula, take the first one, just put it at the top. We're gonna to take our next one, do the same thing, just fold it again. I'm gonna go ahead and take, put it there, and then we're gonna take our last one, do the same thing again. Just fold it, take this, I'm actually gonna flip it. And that pastry cream came out a little bit, which is okay. 
So a little bit coming out is fine. We're gonna wipe our cutting board off real quick. Then we're gonna take our chocolate sauce next. As you can see, it's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's still shiny. It's not chunky. We're gonna take just our little tasting spoon here. Just enough on top. And we want it to be where it's still a little bit moving. It's not too thick. What we're gonna do is just let it kind of drip. Just enough to touch the crepes. We don't want too much sauce because this again is very rich just with dark chocolate, right? So just enough that we wanna have a little bit on each crepe just so on each bite we can have some, right? I'm going to take my towel, my just a simple paper towel and I'm going to wipe any sort of edge. Then I'm gonna take my strawberry and simply garnish this. See, there's a little bit right there and that's okay because we can always cover that. So we're gonna take our, take our strawberry and we're just simply going to put some strawberry on here. Strawberry on the top, we'll put a little strawberry right here, just on the side, all the way down. That way you get a little strawberry in every bite. Just really simple, nothing over the top, just as it is, crepe, chocolate sauce, our cream patissier and our strawberry garnish. And then any sort of little bits we need to clean, always make sure we present a very clean plate. And there you have it. Mm -hmm.